In this video, we're going to take a look at how simple uh, compounds form. And so by the end of this video, you're going to be able to use information about the number of valence electrons to determine how atoms will form a compound. And you'll also be able to compare properties of two different compounds, ionic and molecular, or also known as covalent compounds. So let's get started. Let's start by first defining what chemical bonding is. So chemical bonding is a connection between atoms or ions, and that's known as a bond. There are two different types of bonds, and they work quite differently. The first is ionic bonding, which inv involves ion ions, and then the other type of bonding is our covalent, or mo our molecular bonding, which involves atoms. So let's look at ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are those that are made up of a metal. Remember, metals are found on the left side of our periodic table and a non-metal, so those that are found on the right side of our periodic table. And I'll show you how an ionic compound is formed in a moment, so let's just talk about the properties that they have. They have very high melting points. Uh, they are in the hundreds, if not thousands, of degrees Celsius ranges. They also form crystals and if you take chemistry in later courses, you'll learn a little bit more about what those crystal structures look like. They will also dissolve in water, and they'll form solutions that can conduct electricity. What's really interesting, though, is that the crystal states do not conduct electricity. Uh, so that's kind of a worthwhile difference to know between those two. And then they, most of the time they are solids at room temperature and that is because of their high melting points. So how do ionic compounds form? Well, we need to remember that atoms are most stable when they have a full outer or valent shell. So they, they are most stable when they have a full valent shell. So in an ionic compound, what happens is one or more electrons are transferred from the metal to the non-metal. In order to then create ions, the metals will lose electrons, so they become positive ions, or if we remember from other videos, those are called cations, and our non-metals will gain electrons. So they'll form negative ions, which are also known as anions. And the positive and negative ions attract each other. And this attraction is actually what's called an ionic bond. So they're not actually bonding together per se, but they are attracted to one another, and that is what is considered an ionic bond. So let's look at an example. If we take sodium, so and let's draw the Bohr Rutherford diagram for sodium. So sodium has 11 protons. 12 neutrons, and then it's got 11 electrons. So we'll do two, we'll do eight. And then because it's in group one, it has one valence electron. And then chlorine, if we take chlorine, for example, we've got 17 protons, 18 neutrons, and then it's got two in the first shell, eight in the second shell, and then it has seven valence electrons in its valence shell. So there is seven. Now, sodium, to be a fully stable, would rather lose one electron so that it has a full valence shell. So let's pick a different color here. So what happens to create this ionic bond is the valence electron for sodium will transfer to the valence shell of chlorine to give chlorine a full valence shell. And then when this one goes, 
sodium also has a full valence shell. So it's going to create the ions that have a plus one charge and the ions that have a negative one charge for our chlorine. Okay, And then the attraction between these two ions is what creates that ionic compound. Let's talk now about molecular or covalent compounds. So these are pure substances that are made up of two or more nonmetals. Remembering nonmetals are on the right side of our periodic table. And they are chemically linked together. So some common properties of covalent compounds is, especially relative to ionic compounds, they have pretty low melting points. They form substances that are brittle or soft. They're very, very poor electrical conductors and they can take on various forms. So they could either be solid, liquid, or gas at room temperature. And that is due to their low, low melting points. So how do molecular compounds form? Well, instead of giving up electrons, the nonmetal atoms are going to share electrons. And so the sharing of electrons is what a covalent or molecular bond is. So for example, if we take hydrogen and chlorine, hydrogen and chlorine are both nonmetals. Hydrogen has one valence electron and chlorine has seven. So chlorine to be stable wants eight valence electrons and hydrogen to be stable wants two valence electrons. Now, we don't get that transfer of electrons here. Instead, what we get is that they share their electrons with each other to form that chemical bond. So you can see the X is the valence electron from hydrogen, and the dot is the valence electron from chlorine. They are both sharing an electron with each other. So if you looked around hydrogen, it has two valence electrons now. And if you looked around chlorine, it has eight valence electrons now. So important points to remember, ionic compounds are a transfer of electrons in order to create that electrostatic attraction of ions to form an ionic bond, whereas covalent bonds share electrons to become chemically linked and create that covalent bond. That's it for then for this video. Let's move on to our next task.